Hello, everyone. I am Chao Chuan. Today, let's talk about Caden the Zool. Zool is an ankylosaurian dinosaur with well-preserved fossils. This specimen is nothing less than a miracle. At the first discovery, it did not attract much attention. A famous movie in the 1980s was called Ghostbusters, and a monster named Zool was in it. The first article about this dinosaur focused on its head. Its fossils contain a well-preserved skull, which displays an oxhorn-like structure, resembling Zool, the monster in the movie. So scientists named this dinosaur Zool. Later, after careful repair to a large piece of a collected rock at the time, scientists found an entire mummified back specimen. Therefore, we have a clear and intuitive understanding of the arrangement and shape of the armor plates on the whole back of this dinosaur. Currently, research on Zool is still ongoing. In addition to the definite research on the head, there is also on its tail. Zool, discovered in Montana, the USA, was unearthed with a tyrannosaurid dinosaur. A whole piece of rock was packed back to the laboratory, and it was slowly cleaned up before surprising people with its amazing look. Let's look at the features of each body part of this dinosaur step by step. The first is its head. Its skull was preserved quite intact, so we can accurately restore the image of this dinosaur's head. Behind its eyes, resembling many ankylosaurians, were two short horns. It had developed horn-like structures at the jugal bones. Its jugal bones were like large triangles. Some reconstructions made its entire jugal bone wrapped with keratinous structures. However, after careful observation, we found that rough traces only appear on the edge of the jugal bone. As a whole, it is relatively smooth with somewhat clear boundaries. Therefore, when we did restoration, we still made the keratins on the lower part of the jugal horn. The region near the eyes is still with scales. This dinosaur had a relatively wide mouth and may have had keratinous beaks when alive. Its two nostrils were facing forward, a bit like Euplocephalus or Pinacosaurus, but unlike Ankylosaurus. The Ankylosaurus nostrils were facing backward. Based on the relatively new muscle restoration methods over the years, we restored this Ankylosaurian to be able to open its mouth widely. It did not possess cheeks like that in the early restorations. This dinosaur may have had a large oral fissure, and the corners of its mouth may have extended to below the jugal bones. Besides, two very prominent keratinous structures were on each side of this dinosaur's lower jaw. Its face didn't preserve any skin fossil, so we don't know much about the scales on its face. However, some ankylosaurians have preserved facial skin fossils, such as Borealopalta, which preserved fossils of partial skin behind the face. Based on this, we analyzed that Zool might also have tiny scales on its face. Its face might look neat and smooth at first glance, but in fact, it had delicate scales. We tried our best to present this appearance when we restored this model. If you observe the model directly with your eyes, it may be relatively smooth, but if you observe it from the side under the sun, you can see the delicate scales on its face. These scale structures are also applied throughout its body. Among all the known ankylosaurians, it was the one with a peculiar armor plate structure. Compared with ankylosaurus, Zool had a longer neck, about one and a half to two head lengths, so this dinosaur's neck was more flexible. Its neck fossil also preserved some armor plates. General ankylosaurians had a collar-like structure on their necks. In most cases, this structure contained two rings. In extreme cases, it might have three rings. Zool had such a two-ring structure. Because its neck was relatively long, the distance between the two rings was somewhat far. Its neck was more flexible. Many ankylosaurians had round bone or keratin-like gaskets on their necks with six armor plates on top. It is easy to misunderstand that there were two complete rings of bony plate-like structures directly attached to their necks, feeling like they were wearing two golden hoops. But, in fact, a layer of scaly skin wrapped this structure. This hoop was actually like the cartilage shield of the wild boar, buried in the flesh. When we did the restoration, we made the two hoops buried under the flesh. 
On the surface, we made a layer of skin covering on top. These two hoops were not prominent. On the epidermis, there were still six spikes in each hoop. Zool also preserved part of its neck skin, displaying smaller scales distributed around the larger armor plates. Next, let's look at its back. The entire back of the Zool specimen has been preserved in mummified form, and since it is still being studied, we don't know its color. Combined with the general imagination of animals such as ankylosaurians or tortoises, we believe that the small plates of this animal may be brownish, and the large plates may have red pigments, resembling the Borealopalta. However, its real color should wait for scientists to conduct further experiments and give a definite answer. At present, we are just guessing. Its back clearly shows a pear-like shape, with narrow shoulders and a broad pelvic region. Counting from the shoulders, there were about seven rows of armor plates like this. If you take the two at the base of the tail into account, there were about eight rows. There were seven to eight rows of ring-like structures. Its armor plates were generally arranged in rows, but some changes appeared in the middle. Since the fossil is well preserved, we replicated the exact appearance of the fossil on this back part, ensuring the arrangement pattern is exactly the same as when it was alive. The armor plates of other ankylosaurians seemed much softer. For example, this type of large armor plate of other ankylosaurians looked smoother, but that of Zool was very rough. These small plates on its back were very bulged. Some other well-preserved ankylosaurians, such as Borealopalta or Sauropalta, have large, relatively flat plates on their backs, like being covered with coins. However, the plates of Zool were like a pile of randomly arranged stones. Each plate was like a sharp spike, similar to the surface of a durian. The edges of these large plates were quite sharp, round, and thick. Prominent texture like this can be seen on the plates. Its plates grew very regularly. You can clearly see that there are many grooves on its plates. Each groove at the base corresponded to a scale on the body, so that the scales were arranged in a circle at the base of the plate. The scutes on its back were very large, each one was about the size of an egg, like a pile of very sharp stones, very spectacular. Although this dinosaur's body was not big, about 6 meters long from head to tail, its back occupied a very large proportion, looking like a sizable double bed. Zool also preserved excellent skin impressions on the sides of its body. The side skin impressions show that these large scales quickly become smaller when coming to this position and extend to the belly, arms, and legs in a delicate arrangement. Of course, we have not seen the fossilized skin of its legs so far. Extending in this direction, its limbs might also have small scales like those of normal dinosaurs. The evolution process of scales, from large to small is well preserved on the side of its belly. The scales along its back were quite large and gradually transitioned to very fine scales, with a size of only 1 cm or even less than 1 cm. This model also shows this. You can see that the very rough parts gradually become pretty smooth. Although it looks very flat here, if an intense light comes from the side, you can see that delicate and shallow scales are arranged in this position. There is no relevant discovery about its belly yet because the abdomen of the fossil is absent and no skin impressions are preserved. However, these scales on the side are located pretty close to the abdomen. The scales at this position show that they gradually changed from random distribution to regular rows. So, we can deduce that it may have tiny grid-like scales on the belly, extending downward row by row. Zool also preserved partial skin on its shoulders and forelimbs. Like many ankylosaurians, such as Pinacosaurus, the skin impression shows some large keratinous structures on its upper arms, along the periphery of this large keratinous structure were delicate scales, just like this model shows. Its forearm has not been found, we restored it based on other ankylosaurians with similar patterns, such as Pinacosaurus. There are currently no skin fossils of its legs found. When we did the restoration, we borrowed ideas from some well-preserved dinosaur leg fossils, such as Cumbarosaurus found in Australia, 
and some early dinosaurs, such as Skeletosaurus, whose legs were covered with relatively small scales. There are currently no clear fossil studies on its limbs. Still, we can generally conclude that this dinosaur is likely to have five fingers on the forelimbs and three toes on the hind limbs, like other ankylosaurians. Two to three fingers in the middle might have nails. We made three nails, and the other two degenerated without nails. The tail of Zool is also a very distinct feature of it. At present, the upper part of its tail has been cleaned up, which is well preserved. We can see nine pairs of large plates, growing along both sides of its tail, from the base to the tip. The third pair was the most slender, and the fourth pair became shorter. The four pairs at the root were all shaped very sharp and elongated. The following three pairs, the fifth, sixth, and seventh, were wide triangles. The eighth pair was quite small. Strictly speaking, it should be ten pairs, but the ninth and tenth pairs fused into a tail club. The shape of its tail club was peculiar, which was a square. The tail club was asymmetrical. You can see that the two rear ones were obviously smaller, and the armor plates were also asymmetrical from left to right, and the whole looked a bit deformed. This is also critical research on Zool. Researchers believe that its tail may tend to swing to one side. The scientific name of this dinosaur is Zool Curvastata. Curvastata, deriving from Latin, means shank destroyer, indicating that this dinosaur would smash the calves of other dinosaurs with its tail club. There is no direct evidence in the research that it actually smashed the lower legs of other dinosaurs. But there is an important discovery, this fossil displays that the tips of the spikes in this part are broken. Our model still shows a healthy appearance. The content of the paper points out that Zool would use its tail to fight with its peers. These positions were smashed by another dinosaur with its tail. Because its tail was always used with one side, the tips of the spikes on that side were always broken. We can imagine that this dinosaur may have used this tail during courtship or fighting for territory. This model presents a tail swing action. You can see the angle of the tail is basically horizontal with the position of the broken spikes in its fossils. If two models are placed together, the tail can just hit this spike. A partial skin of the dorsal side of its tail has been preserved, showing small spike-like scales on the back of its tail and these scales were arranged in rows. The clearest part contains a row of five scales. Although it only preserved this part, we can infer that its tail may have been covered with belt-like scales row by row from the root to this position. Such a structure will make this animal with hard armor more flexible in this position to move from left to right. In addition, on the underside of the tail of Zool, we made a row of downward spikes, during the restoration by relying on animals with a similar structure, such as Pinacosaurus. There is currently no clear research showing the existence of such a structure. The fossil of this part is absent, but we have restored some spikes based on the typical growth pattern of this type of dinosaur. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Caden the Zool. Thank you all.